Howdy y'all, my name is Brent Heffertown, Mr. Hunter, Total War of the Mr. Hunter Tribe, and today I want to talk to y'all about Warrior Parses. Oops. Howdy y'all, my name is Brent Heffertown, Mr. Hunter, Total War of the Mr. Hunter Tribe, and today I want to talk to y'all about Warrior Parses. Shit. Many people have a fascination with the website called Warcraft Logs. And they're all about how high of a number they can get on the boss fight on warcraftlogs.com. Well, I just want to talk to y'all a little bit about what warrior tank parses are and when you could and how to push a parse up or whether you should not be stupid and wear a shield for the fight. The fight I'm going to use as an example here is Void Reaver, who honestly doesn't hit super hard. You can dual wield the fight. The main mechanic is how much threat you can pump out whenever he's doing the 20% threat knockbacks. So in this case, we've got Warrior Tank and Two Paladin Tank. The bear was out of town. We moved the bear to the other raid. We don't have a bear. So it's Warrior Paladin Paladin. And Paladins are strong tanks. They don't usually do as much threat output when they're not already holding aggro as a bear, say for example. For a warrior, I'm going in dual wielding. I'm going in with the agility elixir. Adamantite sharpening stone on my offhand, blessing of might. I also got the armor scroll, strength scroll, agility scroll. And I'm in full motherfucking threat gear. Rocking that DST. What's my other trinket? Solarian Sapphire. Why do you have that, Brunt? That's because I want to give the strongest battle shout in the game. Wait. Excuse me one moment. What in the hell? Dust howling. Concussion blow you. Look at this. 306 battle shout? I don't think so. It's more like this. 470 attack power. Wow, how do you have 470 attack power in your battle shop, Brunt? Well, I'll tell you. It's because of this. Commanding presence 5 out of 5. What? How do you have that? Don't you have Devastate? Yes, I have Devastate. I cut some of these defensive talents because my tanking set is pretty strong at this point. How am I still in combat? Who am I in combat with? Man, this is some tale as old as time since classic. Vanilla classic? Okay, there we go. Mitigation set. It's pretty strong for Serpent Shrine Cavern and Tempest Keep because we killed a bunch of the bosses in there a bunch of times. So that means for some of these fights, I could turn up the aggression a little bit and instead of playing super safe defensive with the mitigation stats, 16.4k armor, 514 defense, check the melee, 14 expertise, 65 hit rating. We're going very defensive here. I could even go for a stamina thing. If I wear this set, it is the most difficult for the boss to kill me. So we're going to have the greatest stability in the fight unless someone pulls aggro. And you can't pump out as much threat in your fully defensive set. By design, you are investing in defense, shield block, block value, parry, dodge, all that stuff. Stamina, that's what you're going for with mitigation. Now with threat, you're pumping. You're basically a DPS who happens to be in defensive stance. And who happens to have a lot of survivability. With a big health pool. I have no buffs right now. 12.2k. Put up that 470 battle shot. I've got the DPS tier 4 helmet. With a 12 agility and critical damage. And hit rating. And I have AP hit rating enchant. Still mitigation neck. This has a bunch of stats. And if you're fury prod and you're holding the boss. You want stamina. You want defense. And you want hit rating. Baldur's of the Wardancer. Compare these to the Warbringer. 
They have more armor. They have way more strength. I got Agi Hit, Agi Stam. Crit rating on that. We pump and threat in this set. Gladiator chest. Oh, and I got some new pants. Merciless Gladiator pants. Hell yeah. Mix in some PvP gear. Girdle of the Endless Pit off Mac Daredon. Warbringer hand guards. You know what gloves I want for threat, but I don't have yet? I'll show you. Let's go to that Tempest Keep. Alar. Gloves of the Searing Grip. Now this is some threat. You get the Gloves of the Searing Grip. Where is this? 33 Angie, 37 Stam. Yeah, it's low armor because it's leather. You could mix in armor somewhere else in your kit. 18 Expertise. That is a massive amount of Expertise. You can compare that with Mal to the Tides and such. Man, I got interrupted by a bird and I got all off track. So, the point I was making was... You've got threat pieces and you've got mitigation pieces. If you're going to dual wield tank and try to pump as much threat as you can, you can mix in some DPS warrior gear with your mitigation gear. Basically, you don't want dead stats on yourself like shield block rating if you're not going to be holding a shield for the fight. For Void Reaver, I dual wield the entire fight. So I don't want any shield block value, shield block rating. None of that's going to do anything for me. Armor, yes. Stamina, yes. Parry, yes. Dodge, yes as well. 30 stam on this bad boy. That's a great stat. Stam is good on a tank. And then you give AP to the rest of the party. Melee love to see it. 470 attack power. Anyway, let's continue with Void Reaver. Clear the trash. You get all your threat gear on for this fight. All of it. Look at this, I'm eating the Halloween candy. Iron Striders of Urgency. I'm getting even more damage stats. Scroll of Agility. Scroll of Strength 5. These are expensive. Not really necessary. This is if you really want to be try hard. It's not going to make or break a fight, but if you do want the higher parse number, you do have to pay for it. On White Main, it is about 11 gold for an Agility Scroll. And 5 gold for a strength scroll. Sometimes a bit more. That can make wipes a little bit more frustrating as well. So I would not advise for prog unless you think you're going to kill it. Or get close to killing it. And you want to invest in the scroll. So you can see the later stages of the fight. So. How do you do a threat race fight as a warrior? Can warriors pump threat in Burning Crusade Classic? Answer is yes. They can, but it's tough, and it's fast tempo. You've got to be hitting Heroic Strike every single time. Every single, every single time you have an attack. No, not even that. You want Heroic Strike queued to help your offhand success to hit. If you've queued Heroic Strike, it gives your offhand a bonus to hit. So you should always have that button hit. Watch in the bars down here as I'm doing the fight, and watch the Heroic Strike Devastate. We'll assess, was I good with this? Going in with the boss, we're going to let the Paladin get initial threat to help him out. So Paladin has it first. And I Heroic Strike. Look at that Q. Up there next to Demo Shout. How often am I hitting that? Every time. Is Battle Shout up? Yes. Heroic Strike Devastate. Heroic Strike every time. We learned this on Veil. Vale. I should be pressing this every time. We Q Heroic Strike. It gives our offhand a bonus. We generate more Rage. From our white hits, benefiting from all of our aggressive stats that we got. Hit rating helps offhand, expertise helps main hand and offhand. The strength, the agi, the stam is keeping me alive. 15.7k health. That's with commanding shout in the party from the warrior. Iron shield potion is on. We've also got bloodlust. We've got the unbridled wrath from the shaman, giving us a damage bonus. We've got Wind Fury. A lot of this, a lot of parsing as a warrior depends on your group comp. What do you have in your party? I have a Druid in party. I have a Shaman. 
giving me very good totem uptime and the totems that I want. Strength totem, wind fury totem. There's a mana totem for his mana. But we are swinging away and we are way ahead in threat. 131k threat, 132k threat. Second in threat is a warlock. If they pull threat, they might die. But we might still be ahead. We're keeping up Demo Shout. We're keeping up Battle Shout. Heroic Strike as fast as we can the whole fight because it benefits our offhand. You gotta be fast tempo about it. You've got the Haste procs rolling. Battle Shout. 10 seconds left. Jeez Louise, what is attacking me this time? It's our heckin' rock guy. Man, these birds are chill, but the air elementals and the earth elementals are messing with me. It's the evening time. Anyways. Fly up into a tree. These elementals won't leave me alone. I'm trying to do a video. Jeez. Anyways. Heroic Strike Devastate. That's what I'm saying. Battle Shout. Three seconds left. Am I going to get it up? Two seconds left. We refreshed it with two seconds left Battle Shout. What that means is we're not wasting globals on Battle Shout instead of Devastate. Nope. We are Devastating and we're only Battle Shouting when we need it. We're only Demo Shouting when we need it and the other warriors covering that. You might say, Brunt, Brunt, Brunt. Why don't you Thunderclap Void Reaver? And I'll say, well, that's because Void Reaver doesn't hit very hard. And I may maybe I want him to hit me more. Because that gives me more rage. But I'm still not capping out on rage too much. Because I still have threat. I got a threat knockback and a threat knockback and I still have threat. And on this fight, you get the most threat if you're holding aggro. And doing the pounding thing, AoE. You see that pounding ability? Everyone's taking some damage. That's catch-up mechanic for the other tanks. So, say I was second in threat, and maybe there was a different tank, a bearer, a paladin holding it. If I'm second in threat, whenever the pounding is going off, I'm getting rage income from the AoE, so that's good for me. So even if you don't have threat on the boss and you're a warrior or bear, you should still be doing your defensive stuff to build threat. Expecting to tank as soon as the main tank gets knocked back. Look at me being in Berserker Stance near the end of the fight. I did Last Stand, Recklessness, Berserker Stance, and I'm spamming Executes. Why? Because we've killed the boss, nobody's died except one person. So I went a little bit ham there at the end. Little tricks like that are what can drive the number up in your parses, but you wouldn't really say that's a necessary tanking practice. We're more styling on the boss at this point. Void Reaver, we're saying, hey, I'm not scared of you. I'm going to Last Stand and Recklessness. And I'm just going to Berserker Stand, spam Execute at you to get tons of damage. It is a lot of threat. And it, honestly, it's hard for Void Reaver to kill me with 20.6k health. Even in my threat gear. And then the Paladin gets threat. I can still keep swinging away. And getting the Executes. This one did end up being a 99. Some of it's going to come down to your gear level, right? If you don't have super threat bits then you're not going to get a 99 but you can still work on your threat output and that's the point the point is for everyone to learn how to utilize the, their toolkit to the best of their ability whatever you got how can you tank that in the best possible way in the raid today do you need to mitigate on this fight is it like a morogrim tidewalker do you need your full mitigation kit or is it like a void reaver where it's all about how much threat you can pump. Or a Leotharos or something. Anyways, I hope y'all found this useful. Just wanted to break down Warrior Tank Parson a little bit. And remind people that there's more to the game than Parson. And sometimes as a tank, it's better to shoot for a lower number to play it safe with your mitigation. Than it is to take a risk and try to deal more threat with your dual wield in. Ancestors watch over y'all. Don't forget to repair and buy arrows before you leave town. And yeah. Oh, you should still iron shield potion. 
Don't haste potion. I tried haste potioning and I died a bunch. Maybe you could try it. But if you do, you want to mix in some mitigation gear. Because when you go splat, well, you're not going to get a very high number at R, will you? <laughs>